वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल दिस वीडियो आई थिंक इज गोइंग टू बी डिफरेंट वीडियो देन माई यूजल वीडियो दिस वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट सर्किट एंड द सर्किट वी वॉन्ट लुक एट इज एक्चुअली इन वेलोप डिटेक्टर वेर डू आई यूज दिस सिग्न वेर डू आई यूज दिस सर्किट इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल एंड ईजी सर्किट एंड आई जस्ट एक्चुअली मेड इट ऑन माई ब्रेड बोर्ड आल शो यू दैट एंड आल शो यू द वर्किंग ऑफ दिस डायोड इन वेलोप डिटेक्टर सर्किट We normally use this envelope detector circuit to demodulate double sideband full carrier signal or double sideband large carrier signal, where I have a carrier that is present and along with my sideband, upper sideband and lower sideband. This is probably the easiest receiver that you can design for a modulated signal. For suppressed carrier, it's a little bit harder to design a receiver. Envelope detector won't work, and for single sideband. it won't work uh, for that you need a weaver demodulator i'll leave a link to a video i'll make that uh, weaver demodulator on the radio since this was a simple circuit uh, i just want to go over the circuit all you need is a diode a capacitor and a resistor so this network right here this is acting as a low pass filter so i'm just going to call it a low pass filter and this is my diode this is a normal diode that you can easily find uh this is a ceramic capacitor without any polarity so note i didn't write any polarity on this capacitor symbol and i have a 1 mega ohm of resistor so i am passing my so i'm going to generate my am modulated signal using my uh function generator uh it's going to generate me a am modulated signal i can change the modulation depth and everything using this and um, i'm going to apply the signal to the to my circuit here and what it will do the basic principle of this circuit is going to be this it will the diode will only conduct on the positive side of the circuit so here i'm applying this so input of this is like this is going to be a circuit that looks something like this at this so when i apply this this is how the signal would look like with both of the envelope the top part the top part and the bottom part now what it will do the diode will only pass during the positive cycle so here at the output i would see only the top part with inside of those uh, higher frequency component which is going to be a carrier signal now what this low pass will do it will actually remove this and it will only just bring me this signal the top part the riding part of this the outline of that signal and this is what i would see at at my output which is going to be my modulating signal so let's look at the property uh just to recap what's going on what is my amplitude modulated full carrier looks like it's going to be one half you have fc plus fm component these are the two components which are going to be present along with my co signal as well which is going to be my carrier signal this is what is going to be present this is what i'm applying two things that you need to notice is this regarding the circuit is uh first thing is uh, i have a carrier frequency that i have chosen to be 10 kilohertz and i have my modulating frequency is 100 hertz and the bill of material is quite nice um, it's only three components uh you have diode you have a capacitor and then you have a resistor i'm using a ceramic capacitor that looks something like this all right this is what a ceramic capacitor looks like all right it has no polarity but notice the number on top of the uh, uh, capacitor the capacitor that i'm using all right let me zoom in now if you were to look at it it has a number on it the capacitor that i'm using it has a number called 103 it has a model number or a part number 103 what 103 is how much is that capacitance 103 corresponds to 1 0 and when you have 3 you're going to add 3 0 in front of it and you're going to write pico farad all right so 103 actually corresponds to a ceramic capacitor with 103 is actually a ceramic capacitor with 103 actually corresponds to 10 30 zeros added picofarad and i'm choosing a 1 mega uh, ohm resistor so when i multiply both of these values because i need to the, the way i'm going to choose these two values is based on tau now if you remember tau tau is actually rc this is the time how long will it take for capacitor to charge itself so this value turns out to be so 10110 picofarad so negative 12 multiplied by 1 mega 
that should give me around 0 0.01 all right 0 0.01 so if i were to move these two values one two in terms of time so this is about corresponds to one two three it's, it's going to be around one milliseconds so one milliseconds almost corresponds to if i were to invert this around under 100 hertz so this is how i'm getting my uh, modulating frequency based on this calculation of tau all right the second thing that i want to do is actually uh, the the second thing i want to do i want to show you how am i generating my uh, amplitude modulated signal and then i'm going to show you everything on my oscilloscope now if you were to look at my uh, uh, if you were to look at my uh, if you were to look at my function generator this function generator has a capability I think I made a video also on it as well. Uh, so I am generating, let me just zoom in. So I have a modulating frequency which is 10 kilohertz, all right, and it has an amplitude of 1 volt peak to peak. Now this is that internal parameter. So I'm using AM signal that has a shape of a sine wave. So basically it's an ampli analog modulation which means my carrier is also analog and my free, uh, my my modulating signal is also analog, both in terms of sign. Then I have a modulation depth parameter, which I have set to 50%. I can change that. And the amplitude modulating frequency, I have chosen this to be around 100 hertz. All right. So these are some, some of the parameters. Uh, this is coming out. And this is going inside my circuit right here. So let me bring in my circuit closely. Let me remove this. This is just my oscilloscope probe. Now, if I were to look at my circuit, it's, it's something like this. All right. So, if you were to closely look at it, let me just zoom in. All right. Let me just bring everything on top here. And let me just move these wires. All right. So, this is what I'm doing. I have my diode, all right, which is connected here. And then at the diode port, because at one end of my diode is my capacitor, that is connected to my resistor, which is one mega ohms. And then that is all of this is connected to my ground. So this is my ground port, which I am firing it up from here. And that is coming from my function generator. And then this is my, uh, this is my ground. This is my ground. And my power is positive on my signal is directly going inside of my diode. As you can see this right here. So this is this is where the positive part of my func from from the function end is coming in, and this is the negative part. So this positive part is going at one end of a diode. So I have used this part of my breadboard to fire up this entire line, so I can I can bring my ground in, and the grounded part is on the other side of my oscilloscope. Notice also something else that I am using a capacitor that says 103 on it, so which means it is 10,000 picofarad. All right, so once I have my circuit, everything is good to go. Now let's look at this. I have my modulation, which is on. So let's look at the input of my signal, which is going to be your amplitude modulated signal. So let's, if you remember it from theory, amplitude modulated signal, which is going to be at the input of this, at the input of my diode. So let's just quickly look at it. I'm just going to stick this in. I'm going to put this over here. Just give me a minute. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. This is where my, and I'm going to stick this in here. Once I do that, all right, once I simply, or I'm going to just put it here so you guys can see it. So once this is attached to it, now let's look at my signal on my oscilloscope. Now, if I were to look at it, and if I were to just tune in the properties of this, isn't that look like an amplitude modulated signal? Indeed it is. If you look at it closely, uh, so this looks like an amplitude modulated signal to me. All right, as you can clearly see, let's uh, stop this and let's, uh, let's stop this and let me just open this up. So as you can clearly see, I can also calculate the modulation index as well. Now, if I were to look at this, this is going to be my v max and this is going to be my v min so the modulation index definition is v max uh, minus v min divided by v max plus v min whatever that magnitude is 
subtract this and divide it by the addition of these two magnitude. So I am choosing this modulation to be 50% just to show you using an envelope detector regardless of if you have 50% modulation or 100% modulation. It doesn't make any difference. I'm um, just showing you anyhow. So this is how this signal looks like. If you can clearly see, I can position this and let me just run this again. So this is how a amplitude modulation signal look like at the input of my circuit and this is where I'm put inputting it. Now the next step is I want to look at the demodulated part using envelope detector which where I'm going to see. So if you, if, I, if you were to look at my circuit, uh, I need to look at it at this part of my circuit. So this is where I'm going to attach, this is where I'm going to attach my oscilloscope probe and this is grounded. So I have this ground which is going in and if you can clearly see my oscilloscope probe is also grounded to a common ground. All right. So at this part, I'm going to put my positive of oscilloscope probe and here I'm going to put the negative side which is already grounded at common end. So this part corresponds to this part of my circuit. Now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just leave it in here and I'm going to leave it as is and I'm going to look at my and look at this, how beautiful this is looking. This is my demodulated signal. Now one thing that you need to notice that indeed it is a, my demodulated signal is the frequency. If you were to look at it closely, this frequency is at around 100 hertz. Let me just simply stop this. Now if you were to look at this frequency, I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in or not. So this frequency value, uh, let me just show you. So this is somewhere around 100 hertz. So indeed, this cheap modulator that cost me even uh, less than a dollar uh, or less than two dollars uh, can give me a demodulated signal, which is which looks quite nice actually. Uh, it turns out to be 100 hertz of signal. Indeed, it was in 100 hertz of uh, my modulating signal. If I want to look at my oscilloscope, let's look at it here. This is 100 hertz. And indeed, the thing that I modulated, demodulated, is actually 100 hertz right here. If you can clearly see this. So that's the idea behind this simple modulator, how you can design a single a cheap demodulator uh, like uh, like uh, envelope detector to actually demodulate my signal. So, so this is what my circuit would look like. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, leave it in a comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.